Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be game number two of the Monkey Bubble EU Invitational, the competition for all the most eminent of EU Overwatch teams. I'm Ben Kunku Phil. With me still is Yokai. So, Yokai, we've had a bit of an upset, haven't we? Yeah, we I'm have. Upset. <laughs> of course, you would be, Phil. It was your very, your very faved, uh, very loved Clockwork Vendetta falling 3 0 in the first round match against uh, Nurki Esports. So. Mm. Uh, that does mean that the match we're going to have today is not going to involve Clock and Vendetta, sadly, but it is still going to be a slobber of a game between Banshee Esports and Nuriki Esports. So, uh, That's yeah. That's absolutely right. And, uh, of course, there are, are other broadcasts going on at the same time. Our partners, Caster's Nest and Nordskun, are producing other games at the same time. Check the, uh, the, pinned, the pinned info down there for where you can find links to those other games and uh we, we we may not have clockwork vendetta to talk about on this one but it is worth noting that we have just started carrying clockwork vendetta merch so if you'd like to give them a consolation prize by going and picking up a t-shirt then you're absolutely welcome to go and do that by visiting the monkey bubble store and uh one final note of course this tone is being brought to you at least in part by insights.gg it's an online fraud analysis and review tool so the top three teams that finish here today will be getting the pro version in order to analyze their games from today and hopefully use that tool from insights.gg to uh, improve their gameplay and move forward on the path to pro for sure and um if we go back to insights.gg just for a second i personally endorse insights.gg oh. very much so i mean it's are you being paid are they paying you not quite not quite not quite okay. but but in all seriousness it's a it's a program that I personally find very useful, especially when doing VOD reviews and such. So even when it's just getting into coaching and things like that, I think programs like Insights, even if it's not specifically Insights, is, of course, almost a must for any coach. So, yeah. yeah. Well, we are, of course, going to be going live very shortly with Banshee Esports, who put up a very convincing 3-1 win over Fourth Dimension against now. Hang on. I got called up for this at the end of the last broadcast for mispronouncing the name of this team. And I'm going to try... But bear in mind that I'm English and we are famously just super bad at pronouncing other people's languages. So, uh, Nairiki? Nairiki Esports is uh, our team coming up next. So hopefully in chat, you'll let me know how I did on that one. Uh, but yeah, so a 3-0 victory over Clockwork Vendetta is certainly something to be bragging about when you consider how far Clockwork Vendetta got along the path to pro in the most recent contender series. So Nairiki against Banshee Esports should be a really good match to watch. This could really go the distance. Yeah, it really well could, especially what I was, uh, obviously, during the break, we were talking to a few of the players from other teams, and they were saying to really keep an eye on Cloud, who is the flex DPS for the side of uh, Nidiki Esports. Uh, comparing with Huge, who obviously sent HM to just the gutter with his Ooh, far play, repeatedly. so we may well have some very, very exciting far matchups, if both sides even decide to run that far, you know, maybe we could see what Banshee ran. Uh, a lot in the previous series for something different. Maybe Nuriki have some of their own uh, predetermined strategies who are just going to throw people off. But I, I believe we're going to do Lee Chang first. Am I right in thinking that? We will be indeed be starting on Lee Chang, our control map to uh, start things off, which is how we uh, then give map pick advantage to the loser of whatever the first map is so it's a very strategic place to start this evening's games uh we saw ilios in the last round so our first time moving to Li Jiang for this evening's games and it's a map that we do see an awful lot of it's one of these maps that comes up an awful lot in scrims because it's um there's a lot of variety you don't just have to run the same composition time and time again there's differentiation between each of those three maps so no surprise that we're going to be seeing that one picked out of this map set here it is also a bit of a fun uh, fan favorite, but yeah, for sure, it's definitely the mo one of the more uh, variety driven maps in the game. Uh, you know, thinking back to the goats meta, we we could have seen some triple DPS, we could have seen some sombra, we can see some goats, we can see some doomfist sombra during that time, uh, hackfist, should I say? Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a lot that can be run even when the meta kind of uh tightens a bit and uh you know allows a lot less things to be as uh as meta put as we say it yeah. uh, you can still see a lot of different things on this map uh so i'll be excited to see what these teams can run out because it's very good for fara but then you get to the likes of uh 
guess we likes to control center where you know maybe these guys who love that far i play are gonna have to maybe swap it over to a doom fist or a reaper instead so it's it's worth noting we didn't get the chance to watch cloud but uh, in the little bit of information that we get given by the teams before the game starts um cloud has got his favorite hero or his number one his best hero listed as doom fist in fact in order it's doom fist hanzo farah so wouldn't surprise me really to see any of those I expect the Doomfist and the Pharah are a little bit more likely than the Hanzo. Hanzo doesn't have quite the utility in this meta that he maybe has had in previous metas uh, with the prevalence of shields. Obviously, a little bit hard to find an arrow in someone's face when there's two or three shields in the way. Uh, so I I'm expecting to see some Doomfist and some Pharah coming out from Cloud. And you're absolutely right. That matchup potentially against Huge, who was a real standout player, in that previous round is probably going to dictate exactly how this match goes. Definitely. And, uh, you know, that matchup between Cloud and Huge, we've said it three or four times now, but it could very well be fireworks. Uh, thinking about the fact that it's in the sky as well. Very fitting to say that, but let's not forget around them. We have names like Philpson on the side of Nureki as sure. well, who very, very well known around the scene as a very strong hit scan player. Uh, very little of, uh, seen very little of him personally in this particular matter, but he's renowned as a very strong player on a lot of the heroes you know around it, it, it it's true and i i have seen fupson play a little bit because he played for crescent Jew in contenders trials but during contenders trials hit scan was pretty much never played because we were right in the middle of goats uh during contenders trials so i didn't see fupson himself actually play anything so i'm looking forward to seeing exactly how good Phipson is. As, as you say, he's very well known in the scene. He's been uh, bouncing around uh, OD and Trials for quite some time now. Yeah, and uh, even looking to more, more names like Relax as well, who, again, known around the scene as a very strong main tank player, and uh, maybe maybe less so than some of the other names we mentioned so far, but still very, you know, up there as one of the stronger main tanks in the scene, especially at a time where, truthfully, there there is a very large drought almost of you know very strong reliable main tank players in the scene so it's interesting to see it but we're going to go to night market first it seems we are now, part of me wonders if the reason we haven't seen so many main tank players recently is so many of them uh seem disillusioned at having to play so much orissa in the meta that we have at the minute i know it's particularly some prominent main tank players at uh, numlock springs immediately to mind not a fan of having to play orissa so much uh despite the fact that it's basically a must pick hero at this point uh running that double shield composition and we have we've not quite got the mirror so huge is going to be coming out with a little uh well no sorry infin's going to be playing the moira against snuffbit playing the anna here so um don't know how much i believe the anna can do here unless of course these uh these anti-nades are just the biggest anti-nades yeah, and those hunting knights are going to play a big part if they can get them in, and that's Ooh. actually a great start for Cloud as well, getting a load of damage oh. onto Dyer. Wow, huge! Not going to take that for an answer. Is going to take revenge on Cloud for getting rid of the main tank. Interesting to me that we've not had the res come. Oh, there we go. The res, as I say, just coming through onto Dyer. Fupson doing the best to bounce people out of this. Uh, this point and we are going to see that that's going to be Nairiki taking the first point but Naru and Huge, JPK all getting in on the fight to flip this back around again but we may see an early 20% <laughs> capped here and Dyer will go down as part of that but plenty of time to get them out. So although we did see that uh, the side of Nairiki did end up rotating first it turned out to be almost a uh, a curse as they, they started losing people so early on and although they had control of oh, JPK oh, oh. Okay, guys, you uh, you can't afford to ignore Cloud because he will just knock your Doomfist out of the air given the slightest chance. Fupson will initially have the um, Meteor Strike here to try and take things over, getting out of the way of some of that incoming damage, looking to try and get a couple of people in the back. Will get the kill oh. onto Invin and the follow-up. Die going down, huge able to get Fupson now as well. Cloud coming in, isn't able to interrupt oh. the res, but does punish Crow. Crow now down. And, ooh, that's going to be Cloud taken down by Invin. A little bit of revenge there. We are going to see Vupson taking out Invin as well as we see the point flip back over to Nairiki. The DPS players on the side of Nairiki there are absolutely killing it right now. Vupson getting some great picks during the fight and Cloud with the opening pick onto JPK. Huge is going to have that barrage though, though. It is going to be matched by Cloud on the side as well. So 
Maybe even revive the Fopson. Ooh, oh, got some caught out in the cold there. Die with the halt brings them back into range of the damage. Now we're with the experimental barrier. Looking to try and get a combo in with the halt to knock Cloud out of the air. Isn't quite going to manage it. Will, of course, have the Gravitic Flux. Going to throw it in. In fact, got the dueling Gravitic Flux and a <gasps> sleep there onto Naru. Doesn't quite interrupt it. Naru is able to kill there onto Alexor. There's a lot of damage then into Relax as well. And that's going to be the Barrage coming out from Huge. Nothing doing. That's down and out. But an answering one from Cloud is going to find two. Buying space for Relax to get rid of Naru. And during all of this, Nedekeet has still had control of the point. So they are closing in on 75%. Three quarters of the point captured, ready to go. And at the minute, Banshee only have the Meteor Strike to try and crack this open with. Forgiving the pun here, they were in dire straits once they uh, once they did end up losing Fubson early, but in the end they did manage to play back. Great team play coming out, but they are gonna have nothing to withstand this pressure here. So good chance of Banshee, but they don't have much themselves to do. Uh, well, of course, to this, push is, this is last fight territory though. They will now have Inban with the coalescence, a great way to try and open things up. We did see uh, briefly there a little bit of pressure to try and get rid of Cloud, but nothing doing on the back of that. In comes the Beta Strike and the Hulk oh. and the combo. Not enough damage to get rid of the tank, but the follow up with the right click will get Alexa out of the fight and an uppercut into the primary fight is going to get rid of Snoppet as well. Beautiful timing <laughs> on that punch as well. Sees Fumpson taken down. This has been a great push coming back in from Banshee. Yeah, now they have a great chance to hold this for the rest of uh, of the percentage they need. They have good chances at positioning. They have Huge, who's been on fire. <laughs> Tire, great there with the well, whole little bit of help there from Huge to get rid of Cloud as well. It's a nice stagger because that's another 10 seconds before they can come back in and take a full team fight. And that's going to be a good uh, 6 or 7% that they can actually use to accumulate. Huge building up to that barrage again seems to have it all the time. <laughs> Uh, Crow took a lot of damage there. Luckily, uh, their ride was able to get out of trouble and give them a little bit of safety. Footsman's going to be coming in with the right click. Doesn't find a target. The Moira able to TP out of the way, managing to pour some damage over into uh, into Naru. But Naru with the Gravitic Flux and nothing coming out of that either. In fact, Footsman landing right in the path of JPK and Crow able to bring Huge back into the fight. Cloud taking them out again. Cloud with a barrage finds Invin as well, but Dai able to get snopped. And Cloud with the last vestiges of the barrage is able to find. JPK and at 91, 99, Nedeke look like they're going to be able to flip this point over. And that's going to be Crow almost managing to get back in and keep that alive. Not quite able to do it. Alexor with the Gravitic Flux might have been just enough to seal the fate of Banshee Esports as they take 1 0 on Li Jiang Tower. And that matchup we mentioned at the start of the, uh, the start of the game, Phil, uh, Huge versus Cloud has been great so far. Huge having a good f uh, a good amount of performance on that far, putting out a lot of damage, winning out the duel a fair few times, but Cloud did seem to come out on top a lot more, and it just allowed his team to follow up with that extra little bit of damage that you have when you lose uh, when the enemy has lost their fire, and of course those biota grenades from Snapper as well were very very strong throughout. I was initially skeptical of the Anna pick because obviously there's a much higher mechanical floor to the hero in order to actually do the damage, do the healing that your team needs to survive. It's a lot more strenuous than just a Moira who can sort of vaguely gesture in the direction of the damaged heroes and just pile in the uh, pile in the healing. But Snoppet was able to make that work quite well. Mm, and now we see him going back to that faithful pick. It worked well. It uh, that's on Cloud. <laughs> Cloud gets the Straight cheeky owner. Guys, come on. They're playing Farad. Don't go over the bridge. You know what that is because Cloud able to get one. And with one member down already, we're going to see that is pretty much uh, Nike taking a very strong control of that early fight. And now uh, going to be a little bit tricky, honestly, for the setup that um, Banshee have to make a lot of progress getting in here. Yeah, Banshee are going to be after pushing into such a great defensive comp, and that was just a simple, great play coming out. Oh, Fubs and not oh, to JPK, JPK straight away. Caught out in the open. Uh, Crow able to get the res and get out of trouble as well. So, this might be where we see things flip over if we can get some of these abilities in the right place. But Dyer took a huge amount of damage on the way in. Huge on the outside, trying to pile in a little more damage. Naru was able to get crowd, but JPK down to Fubson already. Huge, uncontested in the window. It doesn't find a kill. Has found an Anna unprotected. Not quite able to land the sleep, but Fubson in the meantime is able to find Naru and Crow. So huge, despite that pick onto the Anna, has not done enough to open this up just yet. Again, even though Huge is able to be in the back lines, put down a load of damage, Afara can't do much on her own, and the rest of the team are just losing this fight out. 
Great pressure coming in from Fubson and and, uh, and Cloud and Relax is now gonna have that supercharger as well. So they're gonna have such a strong defensive hold on this point. It's gonna be so tough for the side of Banshee to even get through these chokes. So that alone capture the point, although what JPK with the that finds Fubson with the seismic slam, but they are gonna be coming into the supercharger as well. Irvin with the coalescence, oh. not gonna be able to do anything much through that anti-nade. Luckily, just able to get a little bit of damage in on to uh, JP. In, sorry, into Naru at the end to keep him alive. Barrage, beautiful shield now out from Naru, but not enough really to uh, to stem, turn the tide of this fight. Cloud now playing very low to the ground, has to reload. Wanted that kill onto Crow, doesn't quite find it, and that's going to be another reset from Banshee. Nailiki now getting close to, in fact deep in last fight territory. So this barrage out from Huge here needs to be a team kill for them to really stand a chance of getting this done. Alexa is in a great place to stop them from even touching Ooh. this point. Oh, well, luckily oh. the fortified Arissa was able to get in and get the overtime wick ticking, but with two down already, that's gonna look like a <laughs> very difficult task now for Banshee. Huge was slept out of that barrage, Dire. Falling very low, down to low health, knocked over the edge. Fupson with a huge amount of shields, able to just pile in the damage wherever they feel like pretty much uncontested at this point. It's a Hail Mary from JPK, but dead the second they hit the ground. That's us going one and oh. Nairiki taking the early lead. And this DPS matchup is just seeming to be so strong, of course. The team doing a great job backing up that pressure that is going out, but... It is Fupson and it is Cloud that are currently, I guess you would say, the star players, per se, of this roster. Well, so far, early in the game, a little hard to uh, to make a definitive saying. And, of course, control map, typically one of the hardest uh, metrics to use to predict how the rest of the series is going to go, because it's very much a, let's just have a team fight and see what happens. The very little of the uh, strategic payload-centered maps that we're going to see later on in the series. So I'm not willing to count out Banshee just yet, because Banshee did lose their control round in their previous series against uh, Fourth Dimension. So we may see them turn this around when we move to our hybrid 2CP and payload maps. Yeah, and I, I definitely think, like you say, you know, those other maps, like uh, control control point maps, are much more centered around the meta. They're, they're much more affected by them. So when you start to head into other maps, such as payloads, such as hybrid, even 2CP, uh, there's a lot less of a grip from the meta, uh, per se. And as a result, we can see those strategies of Banshee start pulling out really come into effect and really start to, you know, claw away at uh, these teams and really test how good they are adapting and how good they are at just communicating in general. So we are going to be going to Blizzard World next, which is a map that Banshee Esports won in their uh, their previous match, and it's their pick. So they clearly think that they have the strats to make this work. Mm. And we are actually going to see uh, Citroen coming in on the hit scan roll for Banshee Esports as well. So I'm guessing they may well have something up their sleeve that they uh, that you know they're thinking of running here. It's interesting, though, because a Citroen is, is again an unknown Banshee Esports with a lot of players that we just don't have a lot of data on. So, you know, I, I don't I honestly don't know. I wouldn't even like to guess what role Citroen is going to play here. I could try desperately to open the uh, open the team sheet for Banshee Esports and see if they even have Citroen on their list. Citroen. Citroen is in the list, but uh, he has no players associate, no characters associated with him as a player. So you are going into this as blind as we are, guys. Yeah, well, I, I do know the name Citroen, uh, particularly as a raw hit scam player. He was, you know, a, a fair bit of a name around the scene. He's, he's especially seen in the ranked scene uh, in Europe, but. No more for those traditional hit scan rules, such as the mm. Widowmaker or the McCree. So maybe we're going to start to see what we saw with Fees Dog. Uh, against Banshee in the first game we casted here. It's quite likely. Uh, we are now loading into the map. The teams have picked their sides, so we are going to be starting off now with Nairiki on the defense. And again, this is going to really test, you know, if they do have subbed in somebody for a specific strategy, you've got to hope that it's a strategy that has been tested across all mm -hmm. of the map, because we mentioned it in the previous series, Blizzard World has three very distinct points in the map. Uh, point one is very different to point two and three. Uh, point one, more of a all-round, uh, you know, you can run almost anything in, well, 
or at least any form of composition to some extent in that point. Mm. Point two, very wide open sight lines, so good for snipers. Point three, very tight and compact for your Reapers and your Doomfists. So, fingers crossed that that's what they've been aware of as they built this strategy. So initially, and you know, we, we try and avoid falling into the trap of what is being selected in Spawn Citroen, currently showing the Doomfist. So, hmm. you know, the, the knowledge that previously Citroen, known as a hit scan player, uh, makes me wonder specifically why they've been brought into this map to play Doomfist. It confuses me a lot more because JPK wasn't necessarily playing a bad no, Doomfist. Not so. He was doing a fantastic job on that hero, putting down so much damage and pressure. So maybe it is just to, you know, proof themselves for that second uh, and third changes. Uh, mm. We do remember when JPK was eventually uh, forced onto the Reaper, it didn't had nowhere near as much effect as when they were running, uh, you know, the Far Doomfist composition. But what I do like that we're seeing on the defense here is Fupson on the McCree, they know that Huge is a massive threat. And so having something on hand to try and punish that, and not only that, but to use the flashbang to punish some of the uh, the Doomfist play. Cloud able to find the early pick there. Citroen still alive, looking for a kill themselves. Invin brought back into the fight by Crow, but in the meantime, Cloud and Relax able to get a quick double on the back of that. Uh, so still in this team fight, and it's not looking good for Citroen. Brought into this team fight, brought into this map specifically, it looks like to play the Doomfist. It has not had a lot of time to actually get to grips with it. And we are going to be seeing Nadeki once again taking a very very quick team and this is where we see the the playground if you will of fubs and he's obviously as we mentioned known for these traditional hit scan heroes uh and now he's gambled on the mccree expecting huge on this far so they've clearly you know they've downloaded this uh, the mm -hmm. strategy this team comp and they are ready for it if we see swaps it could well you know change very quickly but right now this is going to be nariki's game to lose Absolutely, but of course, they will have this heavy flank of this Doomfist in a position to actually get in and start to disrupt some of these defensive strats. They need to find a pick and take out a support or take out Fupson, who has the all, all ready, ready to go. Clearly a very big threat, and that's going to be Fupson down with one pick already and the Meteor Strike out, not doing a huge <laughs> amount. Citroen showing Cloud exactly how those Meteor Strikes are gun getting two for it. So it only took them two team fights. And we are going to be seeing Banshee completely opening that point up. These Banshee Doomfist players really have a knack of getting big Doomfist ults on the first point <laughs> yeah. of visible, don't they? Yeah, that's the one thing they're known for. It's an incredibly specific thing, but they are known for. But looking at the Ultimus, look at the defense right now. Although they have lost that point, they do have a lot to reset themselves up. Relax has a supercharger. Fubson with the Deadeye as well. So, Ooh, although. Parrot's down. <laughs> scratch that. Oh, well, that's going to be the Gravitic Flux, but <laughs> Fupson with the Deadeye. Ah, oh, you're like, like you forgot about Fupson. He was there to get rid of the Farrah and the Doomfist. Those heavy DPS threats now down and out. Uh, but it's not really stopped anybody because even with that loss, the remainder of, of Banshee Esports were able to get in and uh, stop any sort of defensive comeback for Nairiki. And... They need to set Huge up fairly deep here. They need to get him in a position where he can use his barrage because they are fighting into double support ultimates here and that supercharger if they allow the side of Nariki to get set up here. So this is basically what they have to work with right now, but they need to make it happen. Yeah. Oh, man! <laughs> Huge went looking for a barrage. Instead, they found the muzzle of McCree's gun. Wow, just completely shut down. And this is the second time today we've seen this offensive run really start to stall out on this streets phase. I wonder what it is specifically about this point of the map that makes it so good for Banshee. That was one of the most insane flicks I think I've ever seen. Ah. That, 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 that may have been the most insane show I've ever seen, but Huge does, as a result of that, still have the barrage, and now there's a little bit more to work with in terms of pressure. They have that uh, coalescence, and they're going to also be very close to that Meteor Strike as well, so Citroen can go a bit deeper with his DPS duo here. Of course, Barrett will have the sound bay ready to go, and Fubson with another Deadeye ready to go. It means that Nediki are also in a position to shut down a lot of value coming out of these DPS picks if these ultimates are timed just right. Well, there's the High Noon in the back behind the shield. Nothing really out of it, but it bought a lot of space for Cloud to get in the kill onto Nero. And I think huge panic there because the barrage came out, but the only person that died to it was huge. 
That was a very well placed shield as well from Alexa, though he was very well prepared for that uh, barrage to come out. As a result, though, they do end up losing it, and they are now only fighting with the Coalescence and the Meteor Strike from Citron. So maybe the extra pressure which that is, uh, extra tool of escape allows him will be able to push the tank line forward. But they're going to be fighting into a, a sand barrier as well, so there's a lot of sustain on the uh, on the defense here for them to fight into. And of course, having the sand barrier to allow them to survive that fight may mean that they're in a position to start to generate some more of the ults, because you're seeing Clipson taking a very small early lead in terms of ult charge now that both DPS have swapped over onto the Reaper, and it's Fupson v Huge Fupson definitely coming out on top of that. Really, really showing up for the team here. We'll have one third of Death Blossom ready to go already. And as soon, again, as soon as they see that he just swapped over, they can move Fupson out of the Reaper, but this is a big flux here. Can it find anything with it? Uh, nothing so far, but Snopper able to find one with the Coalescence. Huge finally getting the upper hand over Fupson. Invin down as well. Looks like we're going for a hard reset here. And Huge may well get staggered here unless the shields are out, which they are. So no staggers yet, but... They, are, they have nothing to fight with and only a minute left, so maybe one or two final fights if you really reset quickly. But they're fighting in a flux, they're fighting into a supercharger, so economy is only going to get worse from here. They have to make this happen now if it's going to happen. Out comes the Gravitic Flux. Dia was not able to. Ooh, has just got the Fortify back and able to get out of that. So not a huge amount of value out from that Gravitic Flux, but Alexor and Cloud able to get two openers, two of Banshee down already. And that is the signal for the rest of Nairaki to go in and start to try and generate some of those kills. 43 seconds left to go on the clock, and we just have the Meteor Strike for um, Nairaki compared to the Coalescence and the Supercharger now for Banshee. But is that going to be enough? They're not particularly aggressive ults. Nariki have been so economical with their ultimates here. They have they have the Supercharger still after three or four fights. Ooh, well, that's going to be a potentially big uh, Meteor Strike. Nothing out of that, but it did buy a lot of confusion. And Flipson able to get in there and really start to open things up on the back of it. And now with just 10 seconds left to go on the clock, this is going to be incredibly difficult. Huge needs to get a massive Death Blossom here to really make this worthwhile. Yeah, they they fought so well there and had such great ultimates. It's only going to be clean up now and Dyer is back oh, on that Wrecking Ball. Taken out before they could actually make any use of the Death Blossom. It's going to be down to Dyer to try and keep this alive a little bit longer for Huge to get back in the game. Crow has a sound barrier. They've used it aggressively just to try and get back in onto the point. Cloud not able to find the kill because of that sound barrier. Huge still with the Death Blossom on board. Looking for targets, getting in range. Out comes the Death Blossom, but nothing out of it. So much of it behind the shield. They waited so long. They came so far, but it wasn't enough. That's not a huge distance for Nairiki to have to push this to go 2-0 in the series. And that was, just like I said before, they were so economical. They were using only one or two ultimates per fight and almost always out, uh, forcing out that extra third or four, uh, fourth ultimate out from the side of Banshee as well. So Nuriki doing a great job there, very well prepared, very well coordinated in terms of what they wanted to use. And they they were very quick to adapt as well. We saw Phelps and Swap to the Reaper in the same fight that Huge was swapping off the forest. So whatever that Taylor strategy was on the side of Banshee, it hasn't been working out so far. It's really unfortunate. and. I, I kind of feel like maybe Huge missed a trick here because Fubson swapped to the Reaper at the same time that Huge swapped to the Reaper, at which point there was no longer a specific long-range DPS threat to deal with the Pharah. And with the spawn advantage being so heavily in favor of the attacking team there, maybe we should have seen a swap to the Pharah just to try and leverage a little more space because they stayed on the Reaper for a long time without it doing a huge amount. Yeah, it definitely seemed like once they swapped off of that far, they they seemed very uncomfortable. And we we mentioned last series about fourth uh, fourth dimension not being prepared for the Bastion comp. I feel like the side of Banshee here aren't so well prepared for the you know the Doomfist Reaper Mirror matchup. It, it's definitely felt like they've been uncomfortable in that uh, matchup. But if they do end up rolling out on this, Phelps and on the Widowmaker, I would I would not complain if we would get to see that. Well, again, it's a it's a pick that, unless it's brought out specifically to deal with huge, I feel like there's too much shielding to get a lot of value. So maybe that is what it was played for. Yeah, there we go. Looking for the early pick, swapping back now onto the McCree that can get a little more down and dirty in the middle of a team fight and actually move with the team. Doesn't need those long, quite sight lines quite so heavily. 
But again, it's been putting so much pressure on Huge throughout this whole series, and Huge already taking some damage from Ooh, Fubson. Very low. Oh, so low. Yeah, and they've been all pushed up as a result of it. Uh, luckily, Crow there with the pocket able to keep them alive. But that Citroen down to Cloud already. And this is where fights like this start to crumble. Cloud gets slept, but the punch still connects, and Crow goes down. Alexor now on point, able to get some damage in on the back line. The few remaining members of Banshee. This is looking like a very clean map for Nairiki. Yeah, the, not much further for them to push the payload now, but this is what the McCree from Fubson does. Because of his positioning, Huge can't play as aggressively as he was able to against 4th Dimension or even in the last map. And as a result, the side of uh, Banshee aren't able to push up, so Nariki just walk forward and take what's given to them. Yeah, and of course, uh, Huge, every time they poke their head, Fubson is right there looking to rain in some damage and make it that bit harder for Huge to get any value. In fact, Huge is only just coming up on the barrage now, and we've seen how good they are at generating these. But this could open things up a little bit if it's in the right place. Fubson will use the high noon. <laughs> Fubson able to find Huge. Cloud getting rid of Dai, who gets brought back into the fight. And this is all falling over flat to the ground for Banshee. Nairiki walking right over them. And that is going to be us seeing Nairiki take another map. 2-0 to Nairiki and a very convincing 2-0. We mentioned last time that the first map wasn't so telling on the actual series as a whole. This so far has been business as usual for Nariki. They have been in control. And because of this man, Banshee have not been able to play their game. Quite right. And <laughs> just waiting for it, so patient. I'm honestly, I'm kind of amazed Huge went for that barrage because mm. High Noon is not a quiet ultimate. And you know that Fubson has the reflexes to actually get in and punish you if you try something like that. So I'm I, I'm astounded by that play, honestly. The, the only explanation for me is really the fact that it was last fight and they had lost a member. So they were really in last gasp territory. Yeah, one he last has, roll of the dice. Yeah, he has been one to pull out a load of big barrages when his team needs them. But on that occasion, it just wasn't meant to be. And Fubson was prepared for it as well. So... 2-0 to Nariki, but I do think Banshee have a lot they can do to pull it back. They can, you know, the, we're heading to, um, I believe we're going to be heading to 2CP next. So we, we, uh, next in the series is 2CP. I can see from uh, from game chat that we are maybe having a little bit of confusion from our teams about exactly where we're going to be heading next. Uh, initially trying to say, let's go to Rialto, but Rialto will be later on. And I think we have the pick now. We're going to be going over to Anubis. And we know that Banshee have some strats for this we've seen them do some stuff on this map and that was the point i was about to go into yeah we're, we're now heading into the wheelhouse where banshee weren't just playing the far doomfist they were playing more of the Ashen. they were playing the symmetra they were playing mm. the may they were playing a lot more uh tailored compositions that teams are going to have to adapt to a lot more they're going to test teams a lot more uh and really test their preparation and just their general team play uh we, we've mentioned that nariki uh, or at least Twitch chat has been mentioned, Nariki is a very new roster. Mm. Uh, so, you know, they may not be as experienced with each other and as experienced with how they play with each other. Uh, whereas Banshee, uh, I believe, was recently formed from two cores of two different rosters. So uh, at least some of the players are going to have a lot more uh, coordination with each other. But only time will tell. And for all we know, Nariki could have had someone in the uh, in the background of the previous game who... It was watching, was ready. A little bit of spying that. going on, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of scouting, getting ready for the next match. Of, and... of course, sc scouting is the much more polite way of putting it. I apologize yeah. for uh, accusing them of something. Yeah, it, it makes it seem a lot less naughty uh, if, we call it, <laughs> it if we call it scouting. Indeed, but, um, but they they could really be, uh, they could, for all we know, they could be ready for it. We're, we can't count Nariki out because of Tailored Strats, and we can't count Banshee out because they have said, uh, you know, unique strats in their back pocket four times like this, where they're, you know, backs against the wall, nothing to lose. Basically, do or die, or you're heading to the loser's bracket. And, and the thing is, I think, if you have enough experience, if you've played enough people at this caliber, you, you should have the ability to shut hmm. down these special comps, because the special comps rely on a 
a, a special comp. You know, it, it's a very specific set of actions that if the actions don't come off in just the right order, in just the right place, then the whole thing gets picked apart and the only thing you do is give over a lot of alt charge to your opponent. So Banshee really need to be absolutely pixel perfect with this strat if it's going to work. I, I, I would tend to agree with what you just said about uh, Taylor's Trust not working, but uh, I think back to your favorite, your, your, your beloved. <sighs> Uh, how long am I going to have this rubbed in my face? Okay, look, my favorite team just lost. I don't deserve this amount of bullying, okay? I, I, I was referring to their success, the fact that they had such a oh, I see. specific comp. I, th I thought you were saying, look what just happened <laughs> to them, but uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. M maybe no, a bit of a mentioning see, see of them. Even the loser's bracket, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so they are going to be trying to run this strat into Fupson on the Bastion as well, so a lot of... Well... Looks like we may have had a slight technical hitch there. We got a pause. Uh, not entirely sure what's. No, okay. Looks like we're not getting too big a technical pause. Uh, Crow maybe will regret losing that immortality field quite so early because it's got a very long cooldown. Yeah, it's got. I believe it's a 30, 20, 20 second cooldown. Twenty second cooldown. Yeah. But uh, but Naru has built up a lot of shields on the offense as well, just from this spam damage coming in. Cloud, on the other hand, look at his ult charge. He's on 66% oh, wow. already. That's huge. They can also off to the May. Remember what we saw from uh, from fourth uh, fourth generation last uh, last series. You're quite correct. We we did see them uh, have to back off the symmetric big, which they've had to do here, just because they weren't able to take the high ground control they initially wanted with it. Dyer has managed to find Cloud, but of course Barrett's able to survive that and bring Cloud back in. Relix found Citron as well. Phups is still alive on the Bastion, able to punish huge now as well. So this looks like that's going to be Nayeriki holding on to this, at least for now. For now, and they are actually kind of cooped up in this corner here. So they're going to have to you know, wait for a pretty long time for cooldowns to come online and get their team across. Along with keeping that watchful eye out to make sure Cloud isn't lurching above with that barrage, which he now has. And Fubson is also very well prepared to bring out that Confederation tank, but they are going to go with the Coalescence here. Well, Cole Wilson to start things up, but Cloud in the back line is going to find Dyer, but not before Invid is able to take them out. But of course, they spent so long that Fubson has that configuration tank form and is absolutely going to town with it. Gets two, uses it to position around behind them, cuts off the line of escape, and that's going to be huge down as well. Great play from Fubson. Such a standout player for this team. And still... Uh, Banshee do not have any real big ultimates that they can use. They have that configuration tank, but how are they going to get in position to use it? Especially when fighting into that supercharger, fighting into that Gravitic Flux, and oh, also Citrin. losing so many people. They're getting staggered out so badly, and Cloud is just free farming them right now while they're trying to regroup. This is really unfortunate. It's really undisciplined from Banshee. You've got to wonder if they're maybe a little rattled by how easy Nairiki have made this look. But you need to take stock, take control, and go in fully focused. Big Rock there does manage to knock Barrots to the ground. Isn't able to get the successful kill onto the back of it. But with Snoppy's immortality field down, this is now a pretty good position. If they can burn through that shield, the rock goes out, it hits nothing but shield. Unfortunately, Naru taking a lot of damage will very nearly have that Gravitic Flux, but the Blizzard round the side from Huge looks like this might be enough to really turn this around. The big rock out from Naru finds Relax, and with one minute left to go, that's going to be a team kill, and Banshee finally capping the point. And it's about time, and also look at the ultimates. They have a lot to maybe make the snowball work. On the side of Naruki, they do also have a lot to prevent said snowball but you know playing it widely out uh out you know out thinking out playing the enemy with these ultimates you could very easily you know pull up uh maybe have an eco push now and just next fight is all yours to take well oh, that's a big pull finds cloud but there's just no follow-up but cloud cloud so aggressive wants to get in the back and unload this barrage into them not giving up just yet sees that they've rotated around, sees the Arisa Shield, the Arisa Shield is down now, doesn't want to get directly in the line of that amplification matrix, and we're going for a sneaky wrap around the back, but luckily oh, the down. Moira is there to see them down, but Fubson and Snap It both down, Barrage out from Cloud, finds Citron, finds the Supercharger, but Cloud themselves 
taken down. And now this is Banshee's point. They've taken big possession of it. Fupsen down again, thanks to Naru. Immortality out as well. Alexor attempting to stall, but frozen out and taken for a ride. Crow finds the business end of the Doomfist. Right click, so that's a lot of healing and utility down. And Cloud, Cloud with two takes both supports out of the game. It's now going to be a lot harder for Banshee to sustain through this. Citroen finds Barrett's, but with no healing available to them, that is going to be Banshee rocked right off this point. And that was Cloud came back getting two picks, really showing himself to be a unit in this team's composition and this team's play. <laughs> Especially with a, uh, a stall pick when, when you're really fighting against a tooth and nail. But they are going to start to bring ultimates online to start holding again. They are going to have supercharge, they're going to have the Gravitic Flux as well. Meanwhile, only huge uh, male really standing out to me as a, a possibility for the next fight, unless they get set up and have a chance to use Crow's Amplification and Matrix. Well, we, we have seen this happen the last time we were on this map in our previous round. We did see Huge actually do just this, with Citroen and Crow going around the entrance to the left. Huge taking a bit of a flank approach to get the Blizzard in over the top. Fubson has to direct damage in to try and get rid of the... Um, uh, immortality field, but sadly killed on the back of that. Alexo going for a Hail Mary with the Gravitic Flux. Hasn't quite found a kill with it yet. Cloud able to get huge out. In fact, nothing out of Cloud's Blizzard. And Citroen throws in the Configuration Tank Bomb, but immediately taken out again by Fubson. So a huge amount of value thrown at this team fight by Banshee, and no control percent to show for it. At first, I was thinking we were going to get a little bit of deja vu there, but Great comeback from the team. They, they really used them as well. They were very, very well coordinated on where they were going as well. So uh, they aren't without, uh, without you know, a, a saving grace just yet. They have Dire with that supercharge. They have Narrow still with that Gravitic Flux as well. So there's although no, they no key combo with it, that's the thing. It's very hard to get kills with it when you look at the amount of healing they have available to them. With Snappy, they're ready to go. I think this is going to be really hard for them. Maybe hard, but they do have a chance if they can extend the fight a bit longer and use that supercharger to get a bit of an eco boost Then they are gonna be able to pull this back But it's gonna need a big rare flux and a big supercharger here. Oh, that was a big pull stop huge getting any sort of connection with the right click out comes the gravitic flux Hopes don't ever go to the supercharger Naru trades out for Invin Cloud able to find Invin still gets a second. Cloud going down now. Huge might have just done enough to open this up. We have said that previously. Doesn't manage to connect with the right click. And the uh, healing from the Coalescence coming out of Snappy was enough to keep Fubson in the fight. Who will have this Death Blossom ready to go. Huge, don't worry. Nobody saw you absolutely fluff that jump. And that's going to be Nairiki in charge of the point still. 10 seconds left to go. We're seeing the speed picks coming out now. We've got the Wrecking Ball ready to take this ticking into overtime. The Lucio also on board, ready to keep that going. And that's going to be overtime, ticking over. Flipson able to get in Vindo. And of course, they're going to be pushing into a Gravitic Flux. They have managed to get Crow onto the point, but Cloud able to get one even through that sound barrier. Cloud finds one with the Meteor Strike, and this is pretty much all done and dusted. Huge and Citroen down, Invin down as well. Overtime ticking all the way over. Round one complete. And now this is a really good opportunity for the side of Nariki. They have a goal. They have a a you know a set price, if you will, for that accomplishment. For that final third map win of the series, it's simply 33.3% on point B. However, there was some good showings coming out from the side of uh, from the side of Banshee, and you know, last match we did mention that they had a really good hold on point A with that Bastion Symmetric comp. May not have worked out as well on the attack there, but you know, when a composition is more favored towards defending, it usually has a bit of a better time, especially when you're against a team of the caliber that of Nariki have shown so far. However, you know, they, they they have shown as well to be very good at stalling out points. So they, if they can delay for at least, you know, a minute or two on first point, give themselves, you know, that extra little boost of time from the first point, they can really ha have a solid hold on point B and maybe even pull this map back to a draw or even that fabled victory. So it does look like we're seeing the, uh, at this point, the old familiar strat coming out now from Banshee with that bouncing Bastion with the Symmetra pick. But I think that Nidiki are a team that are much more able to punish mistakes. Uh, particularly with Fubson starting out on the Widowmaker here, 
if somebody is in just the wrong position, that's going to be it. And if you can force a bit of early um, contention onto the high ground and keep Fopson up there on the bridge just to try and click heads, then that is a really good way to open this point up. Hmm. And what we mentioned uh, a lot is a word called Synergy. Uh, you mentioned, of course, they've just been better at punishing mistakes and stuff like that. I'm just, they're much more on the same page. They're much more ready for these things to happen. They know how to react a lot quicker. Citron's, of course, playing that Bastion straight down the middle. Gonna give Cloud quite a hard time, I think, on that far. Probably uh, off to go back and swap. Ooh. Oh, oh, maybe not. Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Sim Turret. You gotta check for the Sim Turrets, guys. Huge with the double there. Already a quarter of the way to that auto. And I was just about to compliment, like, the, the flick on the concussive blast from Cloud to get into that space was beautiful. But then the Symmetry Turrets happened. So let's, let's not dwell too much on that. They are going to be making some compositional swaps too. Cloud going over to that Doomfist. I imagine Barrett is also going to go to maybe that Lucio. Yeah. Uh, or maybe even the, uh, oh. the Batiste. Oh, Citroen! Citroen can't use the teleporter. Oh. That's unfortunate. Interact key not bound. That's, I, I, um, that's a big misplay. I don't quite think that's on Citroen. I think that's more our producer. But they are oh. going to actually make it through. So <laughs> no casualties just yet. But that Thanks teleporter is set up. <laughs> that teleporter is set up as that escape room, and they're all going to be pulled together right in front of him. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, Arissa Holt no longer displaces uh, a Lodge Bastion, and Citroen getting very close to this ultimate. A few more hits. We are going to see the configuration tank form come online. Yet yeah, clearly got that interact button bound. Oh, gets pulled off the high ground now that he's no longer in that turret form. Looking to try and get something in with a Holt, but luckily the kinetic grasp from Naru is going to mitigate a lot of that damage, but Citroen able to reposition beautifully, has a lot of control of the point now. Can this afford position. to throw in a lot of damage without having to worry about repositioning, and now has the Amp Matrix online, ready to go, but Stabby comes in, round the back, has the Coalescence, gets two! Alexor able to find Huge as well, Huge does get a parting blow with a little bit of help there from the turret, but that is going to be that defensive hold over and already aggressive from Pups and pushing right the way up. And this is exactly what you want to see. You want him in position ready before they can take it. Because once he gets there, it's going to be much harder for him to find that angle. Not going to opt to take it instead of opting to save with his team, which I think is the right call. But what you saw is simply that there's so many shields in these compositions that you, you almost get a false sense of security. But as soon as that coalescence come out, that doesn't care. They don't care about your shields. It goes it's straight. It's a great through. initiation tool. It forces mm. you to move out of this way or take a bunch of damage sure but you see i'm going straight on the point here using their shields early and that bongo is out without on the defense uh, super charged out but fubson gets the opening kill huge down and out narrow able to get rid of alexor who themselves was not that close to having well actually very close to getting the gravitic flux themselves but it looks like we may see a hold now from banshee but honestly with four minutes left to go in the clock and only one third of a point required if you're nairaki you're not really too worried about having lost that first fight Especially when you look at the old bank, because there is nothing online on the side of Banshee. But you nearly have a six pack for the side of Nurki here. They have the Meteor Strike, but they're coming up on the Supercharger as well and nearing that beat. So if they can get a few of these ultimates online, they're really going to have a good chance to just overwhelm the side of Banshee. Especially when they have nothing online aside from being relatively close to Invin's Coalescent. Yeah, Coalescence is great, but it's not enough to win you a team fight outright. You need something to follow up. Cloud managing to reposition there with the punch. Coming in, we'll have the Meteor Strike ready to go. And there's going to be the Supercharger out. Cloud going straight for the main tank. Snop it, able to get one. Fubson with the Death Blossom finds Crow and is closing in on Dyer. That is Dyer out for the count now. And Invin down. One third ticked over and too late on that translocate i'm afraid mate and nailiki are going to take us to three and oh in the series moving forward in the winner's bracket yeah nuriki having a very very strong showing throughout that series ps play on point he supports which is always seemingly in the right position ready to provide all that healing and to provide all that uh just utility as well you see lucio a lot in this current matter where you know you need that speed boost you need that uh the sound barriers when you need them, and they were so ready. So they are going to move on to play X Oblivion in the uh, next in the next round uh, round three uh, brackets. Uh, who actually just recently beat uh, Anime Song 3-0 as well. So 
uh, just a little bit of insight for you guys. In the Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you're able to keep up with all this because uh, I'm, I'm so focused on what's going on in front of me that I have no idea what is happening in our other rounds just yet. But we have got one more game coming up for you this evening. And I believe we have an interview with Snoppy coming up as well, who's the, uh, the uh, Moira player that we were just so... Um, uh, talking so nicely about particularly on that last play of the game did a lot to open up space for their team so we'll just uh, have a little bit of a wait for snapper to be here obviously needs to uh have a second to congratulate his team yeah. of course you need you need that little bit of a cool down make sure you know you know you enjoy the moment first and then then media comes second but <laughs> Of course, he had a fantastic performance on that, Murray. He was very consistent. He was always in the right place. His coalescences, uh, it, it was highlighted, obviously, on map three there, where he got the double kill to open up point A. But in general, he just seemed to have very good positioning and timing, and even making picks that really shouldn't work in this meta work well in the form of that honor, specifically. Correct. It was very weird. Because Moira is so strong with what she can do, particularly with the coalescence, uh, it's very unusual that we see an Anna pick here because it's so hard to make some of those picks work to get around the amount of shielding that we're seeing. Yeah, and, and it is to do with the shielding as well, where, uh, you know, like we say, we have Sigma, who has a very, very durable shield. I believe it's 1,500 health. And you also have Orissa, 900 health. So. Uh, you know, those coalescence and those more orbs are so important for getting well, that healing to, out there. to talk us through just the, the value and the impact of that Moira pick, we do, of course, have Snap It themselves, uh, the Moira player for Nairiki. And am I saying both of those right? Am I saying both your name and your team name right now? Uh, yeah, Snap by Snap Band. Nairiki is Nairiki. Nairiki. Right, thank you. I was, I was steered wrong on that one, so we'll get it right next time. So congratulations on your second consecutive win in a row in the Monkey Bubble U Invitational. How are you feeling? Uh, thank you, and yeah, pretty good. Like, uh, we've been rebuilding our roster, and this was like, for me, this has been like the first official games I've played in like three months, so I'm very happy. There is a bit of a drought in between seasons of open division and contenders. Uh, so we're glad to be able to offer you the opportunity to come back and actually show us what uh, Nuriki have been doing in the off season. Uh, so one thing that I wanted to talk to you about was uh, on the opening control map on Lee Jang, you were playing Anna, who is at the minute maybe not the most meta of picks when, when you think about the amount of shielding and how strong Moira is at the minute. What was your rationale for that pick? Uh, my teammates, uh, Barots, our main support, like, had scouted from the earlier match that they like to play Farah comps a lot. Ah. And we have a very strong Farah player as well, Cloud. He's only 16, but a uh, DPS prodigy. And, like, wow. uh, from our scrims, I've kind of, like, concluded that um, I, I've actually played, like, three days in a row this week, uh, Anna, in ranked. Like, mm. I know that it's uh, very good in the Pharaoh versus Pharaoh battle, and you can use the nanos, like, so I just think it's a value pick. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great to see people thinking a little more about this and, and picking against the meta for stuff that they know can be the right pick in the right situations. I think you're very well played to, to yourself and the, and the rest of your team. So uh, Nuriki is obviously a, a newly rebuilt team. Uh, we did see them play in open division and make it to playoffs in the most recent EU open division um have you plans to expand any further or is this the roster that we're going to be seeing from nuriki going forward mm, i can't really comment on that uh, okay uh, yeah <laughs> maybe to, to jump in myself here uh obviously phil mentioned the honor pick uh that you had on specifically li Zhang. Uh, and you mentioned it's obviously very good against Sephora due to the extra range it provides you and also gives it that extra utility with, you know, when Moira is so prevalent, it's great at denying healing. But how different is the Ana play style in this meta with so many shields in front of you, so much to block your damage, as opposed to it would have been in, say, Goats or even a previous meta where Ana was, you know, so prevalent? Mm, I think it's like, it's actually pretty close to, like, if you think of Ana Goats, because uh it's like a resource comp you have to make use of your resources and it is i think maybe a high risk comp because like if enemy sigma and orisa use their shields aggressively it becomes very hard for you to keep your like tanks alive but if you in many sort of ways like bait or bull or other resources can get a anti nade in and just anti nade the enemy tanks that's like huge hmm. 
Okay, well, I, I, unless there's anything that you'd uh, you'd like to plug or you'd like to um, you'd like to publicize whilst you're here, snuff it. Um, thank you very much for for coming and talking to us. So, where where can people find you? What have you got to plug? Uh, well, thank you for having me. Uh, big fan of you, boys. Uh, oh, thanks for Fupsen. He's actually like uh, kind of last minute standing for us, and he popped off. He's been performing really well. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think I believe our Twitter is Nurki Esports, and obviously the pretty boy is not O W. Go follow <laughs> that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. great well thank you very much for for coming and talking with us snap it um so we've got one more match for you this evening everybody so don't go too far because it's going to be along in not too long take care and we'll be right back see ya <laughs>